Hello friends, this video on atoms part 7 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos till part 6 before going ahead with part 7. So when we talk about dual nature of electromagnetic radiation, uh, we mean that electromagnetic radiations possess both wave-like and particle-like properties. That means it can behave as a particle as well as as a wave depending upon the situation when we are studying it, right? So we have discussed about this dual nature in our previous lesson in detail. So when we talk about wave nature, we talk about the phenomenon and the properties of uh, the radiation like diffraction, like interference. When we talk about particle nature, we talk about different phenomena. For example, the black body radiation, the photoelectric effect, photoelectric effect, something which we discussed in length and uh, it was an effect which actually brought into picture the dual nature of matter and radiation. Variation of heat capacity of solids as a function of temperature. This is something which we have not yet discussed. Maybe you will study it in your higher classes. So these are some of the phenomena or properties which support the particle nature of radiation. And diffraction and interference are some of the phenomena which support the wave nature of electromagnetic radiation. So this dual nature of electromagnetic radiation could not be explained by Rutherford's model of atom. Right? Also the line spectra of atoms with special reference to hydrogen. This line spectra also falls or also falls in the favor of particle nature, right? So these were some of the things which could not be explained by Rutherford's model. And that is why Bohr's model came into picture, right? So now there is uh, one important question that might come in your mind that why do we see an object when most of it is empty space? Did you understand the question? Try to understand it in this way. For example, what did I mention? I told that Rutherford in his model has stated that most of the space inside the atom is empty. The only dense region is the nucleus and that nucleus is a very small region, right? So if that entire atom is empty, it is like there is nothing inside that atom. So whatever object we see, which we see in front of us, let us in this case, we have taken the example of this wall. This wall, what is it made up of? It is made up of huge number of atoms. Now all of these atoms are empty. I mean, it is like, uh, you can imagine it like transparent walls. So now if an object is made up of transparent walls, that object should also be transparent. Then why do we see this wall? Why are we able to see this wall as an opaque object when it is made up of something which has got a lot of empty space? In order to understand this, you have to take this example. If you look at this netted wire, right? If you take the example of this cat, if the cat wants to pass through this netted wall, will it be able to cross the net? No. Why? Because the dimension of the net or the dimension of the open space in the net is smaller when compared to the dimension of the cat. The size of the cat is bigger, so it cannot pass through. Right? But if you take the example of this small insect, what happens for this insect? The size of this insect is very small when compared to the dimension of this open space. So the insect will be able to pass through. So for this insect, if it looks at this portion, for this insect, it is nothing but empty space. But for this cat, it is not an empty space. For this cat, it is a netted wire, right? So it all depends upon the relative dimension with which you are observing a particular object. So this, the same netted wire, when viewed by an extremely small insect, he would see it as an open space. For him, there is no netted wire. When he, the insect reaches this point, he could see all around itself open space. So for him, it is open. There is no netted wire which it can see. But when this cat sees it, for him, it is a netted wire and the cat cannot pass through it. Similarly, when we talk about this wall, which, is, which we say is made up of a huge number of atoms which is nothing but empty space end of the day but since the number of atoms are huge and also 
the ray which is being used to make it visibility for example we are used we are able to view objects or our visibility is because of the light rays right because of the visible light so the wavelength of that visible light also plays an important role so the wavelength of the light is nothing but the examples which i have taken here so here in this case this netted wire is nothing but this wall right now if i am viewing this wall with the help of visible light the order of the wavelength of the visible light if it is comparable to that of the dimension of the atom because the dimension of the atom is very small right so if the wavelength of the light is comparable to the uh, dimension of the atom in that case we would be able to see it as uh, what it is i mean in that case we will be able to see it as transparent or open space or empty space but since the wavelength of light with which we are observing it is not at all comparable to the dimension of the atom the dimension of the atom is extremely small therefore we do not see it as empty space so this would be the best example to understand this case so it all depends upon the reference which you are using so reference in this case is the that uh, wavelength of the visible light because we are observing the wall because of the visible light right okay so this was out of the track i know but it i just mentioned it because it it, it might come to your mind because we have always been talking about this fact that atom has lot of empty space and all thank you please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos try free online tests get the best quality study materials study from the best tutors and mentors and much more thank you once again